my lovelies and welcome back. Today I'll be playing with a luxury Chinese makeup brand, Floresist. I have seen this all over Instagram, especially at the like halfway towards the end of last year. I tried to do like a full face and I'm excited. This packaging is so pretty. That's I think what this makeup is known for, for it's a gorgeous, stunning, stunning, intricate packaging. And then just the detail inside. Let's just begin, I'm excited. Starting with their primer. This is a three in one primer that provides protection as a sunscreen, a makeup base, and a nourishing cream that is adhering and brightening. Has SPF of 50 plus. Retails for 39 US dollars and it's rated pretty good. So I am going to use only half of this on my face just because I wanna see if there's going to be a difference. So far it feels pretty good. It doesn't feel tacky, which is interesting. I kind of expect it to feel a little more tacky if it's adhering because it has adhering properties. It's not sticky or tacky, which is good. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna move on to concealer instead of foundation just because when I was reading how to use their concealer, it says it, be it works best applied underneath the foundation, especially if you have blemishes and things like that. So we're just gonna go with the concealer next and then we're gonna go with the foundation. So this right here is their best correcting concealer for light coverage. It's their Tri Blossom Cor Correcting Concealer, 29 US dollars. I got the shade 01 Snow. Feels actually pretty cheap, this compact. Okay, so it says to use the warmth of your fingertip to swirl it into the concealer and then use the brush to apply to your face once it's warmed up. So we're just gonna go with the lighter shade right here, the biggest one. Might as well just use whatever's on my fingertips and bring it underneath my eyes. And it has that really thick consistency, slightly balmy, not too waxy. I think I'm just gonna take my finger for now and just Start blending this. Not that much coverage. Color is pretty good, but this was the lightest palette that they had. If you have any dry spots, it's gonna really cling on to those dry spots. So you can see a difference with concealer, without concealer. And I think this side looks actually pretty good. It's definitely not full coverage or even a medium coverage. It's a solid light coverage. You can still see a little bit of the darkness peeking through. But looking up close, it actually looks really good under the eyes. It's not accentuating any extra fine lines. It's just sitting basically where my skin is and it's just kind of moving with my skin. For foundation, this is the packaging. This is their Balancing Fitting Foundation, 59 US dollars, and they have only three shades. Wow. That's the foundation. Oh my, that's pretty. Very excessive, but pretty. <laughs> I will give it that. This foundation offers transparent and even base makeup for all skin types. I don't know if I like the word transparent with foundation. <laughs> Hopefully there's coverage in here. I mean, it straight up looks like a perfume bottle. Let's pump her out. Ooh, oh, okay. It's very thick. Very thick, very mousse-like too. So let's go for it. It doesn't really say what kind of finish it has or anything like that. So I guess we'll see the finish of this makeup. I'm gonna do the dampen sponge, their dampen sponge that they sent over. I mean, you can see how thick that really is. I already soaked this and then wrung out as much water as I could. It's very bouncy and it's definitely a lot more dense than the typical beauty blender sponge. This one kind of reminds me of the Real Techniques sponge. I mean, it looks like it blended out pretty nice. It's not super full coverage. This is definitely more on the yellow side, which I should have chosen the other color, which is more neutral. I, I chose more of a warm. Looks like it picked up the concealer. So I'm going on the nine primer side with a brush. I'm just taking the last of that pump, which I feel like a lot of this product doesn't go a long way. <laughs> it's actually blending in really nice for the texture and formula. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more coverage, but I do like it better with the sponge. It looks a lot more natural on the sponge side. So I'm just gonna take the sponge 
and just go over on top of this to kind of soak it in a little bit more. Okay, overall, I think the color is definitely off. It's too light for my skin tone, but the finish is actually really, really pretty. Like I said, I do like it better with the dampened sponge than a brush. It looks a lot more natural and a lot more seamless on the skin. It's definitely not transparent. You can, if you come up close, you can definitely see the product on my skin, but I think because it is a little bit too light, it kind of enhances my peach fuzz a tad bit more than I would like it to, <laughs> but it actually looks really pretty. I think the finish is a more of a natural, soft, radiant finish on both sides. I still look radiant and glowy on my forehead, but I don't look extra shiny. I don't look oily. It just looks really pretty and very natural. And I will say, I think the primer side looks a little bit more soft and a little bit more diffused and a little bit more blurred. So I think the primer is doing something to this makeup. It does have a little bit of a tackiness, but it's more tacky on the non-primer side. On the primer side, it's a little bit more of that velvety feel. This is the eyebrow pencil. Very ornate. <laughs> Look at that detail. This is their Eyebrow Defined Powder Pencil, 19 US dollars. I picked up shade brown. It offers clear and fine lines and a velvety finish. Okay, that's cool, I like that, I like that. And it also came with an extra refillable eyebrow shade pencil, which is awesome. So you have the pencil on one side and it has this kind of like a teardrop shape in a way. And then on the other side, you have the spoolie. Pencil is pretty pigmented and it's not really waxy, which is nice. It's very easy to draw with, especially hair like strokes. Let's see how blendable it is. Yep, blendable as well. I'm setting my brows using my Benefit 24 hour brow gel because they don't have a brow gel and I need a brow gel. I will say one thing about this eyebrow pencil, the color is definitely pulling warmer than I expected. The product itself is very smooth, it's a velvety, it's silky, but you can still create those hair-like strokes if you really want to. So it's definitely a great eyebrow pencil so far. Let's move on to eyeshadow. This is kind of the main event right here. Satisfaction right there. This right here is their Floral Engraving Phoenix Makeup Palette, 59 US dollars. Very, very pretty. So intricate, oh my goodness. That's stunning. So there is one glitter in here, shimmers, and then mattes. Okay. Okay, since they don't have an eyeshadow primer, I'm just gonna take a primer of my own. Actually, let's do it on this side. We're gonna take the P. Louise base. And then on the left eye, we'll do the concealer, like their concealer. Cause I really just wanna see if their concealer is a good primer because they did say it's crease proof. I'm gonna take the lightest shadow, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna take that all over the eyes. I'm gonna take this shadow right here, which is the darkest brown. I'm curious how pigmented this is. And then very gently work it into the crease. Wow, it's actually really pigmented for the amount that I took. I mean, there's like barely anything on the brush. I'm gonna start first on the outer corner and then bring it to the inner corner here. It's a very soft shade. Wow, that blends really nice. I'm barely applying pressure and wow. It's blending out really, really nice, really soft. Not a lot of kickback which is nice. I'm gonna take the tiniest amount on the same brush and bring it into the inner corner as well. I think I wanna take this blue shade and use it as my eyeliner and kind of smoke it out just right here in the outer portions of my eye. I think that's gonna look really pretty. Honestly, pretty impressed with the amount of pigment because I'm barely picking up the product on the brush. I think I actually wanna take some of this red, this orange red, and put it like right in the center kind of non-existent. Having a hard time picking up on the brush. I'm gonna smoke out the lower lash line using the darkest shade. I think I wanna take this shade right here, maybe mix it with this one, and put it like right in the center. Whew. Wow, that's pretty. I think I wanna take this shadow right here, actually, put it kind of like in the inner corner, or maybe mix it with the gold. Kind of has a little bit of a warmth to it. 
think I'm gonna take their liquid eyeliner. I wasn't planning on it, but I'm going to. This right here is their Pine Soot Precise Define Eyeliner, 19 US dollars. It's supposed to be long wearing, quick drying, and smudge free. They have cedar extract. That's interesting. Just typical liquid eyeliner. That's brown, that's black. It's not very pigmented, this black eyeliner, which is really intriguing. Like the brown seems a lot more pigmented than the black. So let's go with the black. This eyeliner kind of sucks. <laughs> wow, literally does not want to draw. Okay, honestly, pretty bad eyeliner. I did use a black one because I think it would look it looked better with this look. The brown one is a little bit more pigmented. It's a little bit more fluid and just works better. So I think the black one might just be just dried out and just past its prime. So I will, yeah, not a fan of this eyeliner. Don't like the formula. It's way too dry. It's way too skippy. Just all in all pass for me personally. Let's move on to mascaras. I picked up both of their mascaras. This first one is called their Precise Definition Mascara. This right here is a waterproof mascara. Do you guys see how crooked the packaging is? <laughs> so this is a very typical, very densely packed boar bristle brush. The formula looks very sticky. And then this one, nicer packaging. Mascara, wow, are you tiny super 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 tiny little micro bristles i can't even tell if that's boar or if that's silicone bristles but i think i'm just gonna use this on the lower lash line it's actually pretty pigmented wow i'm putting a second coat on the lashes just to make them a little bit more dramatic honestly i'm not even sure what this mascara is for because the bristles are so, so tiny, it barely deposits any product onto your lashes to give any kind of effect. So I'm not really, I'm honestly kind of intrigued about what this is for. It just says it's for long and, de and highly defined eyelashes. This one is a little bit better. The formula is a little goopy and because the bristles are so tightly packed, so much mascara gets stuck. So you have to clean it off or if you don't clean it off, it's just gonna get all over your eyes, which you saw I got on my eyelids a little bit. So let's move on to the setting powder. Very pretty and this is 3D. Feels feels actually a little cheap, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. This right here is their Fairy Peach Blossom Pressed Powder, 49 US dollars. It is a limited edition dual color powder, long lasting finish. It's supposed to con oil control, long wear with refined portable design. This just even feels kind of cheap. I hate to say this, but kind of like kids makeup in a way. Okay, it took the shine away a little bit on the forehead but it still looks pretty natural. It doesn't look super, super mattifying. And up close, it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look, it doesn't look dry. It doesn't look powdery, which is really good. So moving on to the contour palette. This is their Moonlight Dancing Sculpting Contour Palette, $29. I picked up number one rainbow. This is what it looks like. You have the contour, you have the brightening shade, and I think this right here is the highlight. Pretty pigmented. And I tried not to dip too much. I don't know, I don't like the color. It looks a little muddy on me. Not, I'm not impressed with this palette right here. Okay, let's move on to blush and then highlighter. I picked up two of their blushes. Now these are their Floral Dew Care Cream to Powder Blush, $23 each. So this right here is number eight, which is Moonlight Rose. Looks really pretty. Okay, and then we have number five, which is sandalwood. Oh, okay, so this one just has that color. I think I'm gonna go with this one instead of this one, because I think this one will look really pretty. Okay, so this is supposed to be a weightless, long wear, waterproof formula. And they say to use this with a finger to blend it out. Very pigmented. It's not very liquid. It kind of turns into a powder right away. I'm just gonna take a brush and help blend this in. This is their Dual Blossom Glow Up Highlighter, $39. It has this really intricate, I keep saying intricate because a lot of this stuff is intricate. It has a beautiful rose pattern on the inside, kind of 3D. And I picked up shade number one, Dancing Beauty. Very minimal. Or you can go really intense. I don't really want to. because This is a pretty wet looking highlighter, which is nice. 
Last but not least, we have lipstick. This is the packaging that it came in for one lipstick. <laughs> that is a lipstick. This is their Blooming Rouge Love Lock lipstick, 49 US dollars. And I have shade Taupe, which is Love You Always. So how you open it on the very top, you have this lock. What you do is you literally press on it and the lipstick pops out, but it's pretty secure. You have to like really kind of tug on it, not too much. And then that's the lipstick right there. <laughs> That's the, that's the tube, that's kind of cool. And then you twist it up. And that's another thing that's kind of bothering me. It's crooked inside. <laughs> it has the peacock feathers like all throughout etched 3D onto the actual lipstick tube, which is really intriguing. This is supposed to be a soft, misty matte with really saturated lipstick color. It's very smooth on the lips. This lipstick has like a, like a cream, but like a satin, finish and feel, it feels really nice. It's not glossy, it's not shiny, but it's not completely matte and it's not like a velvet. It's more of like a satin cream finish in my opinion. It's very, very comfortable. I'm really curious how it's going to wear because there's quite a bit of transfer, we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it here. I'll see you guys probably at the very end of the day to see how the makeup looks, how it has worn. But I'm gonna be honest, I'm not as impressed as I was seeing this online. It's really pretty in person. Like I will say like a lot of the packaging is stunning, but then you open it up and the rest of the packaging, like the actual packaging that's holding the product, it feels very cheap and just seeing how just the quality is not there. I don't know, even like the foundation, the pump is not working properly. Just little things like that, that shouldn't happen with how much I'm spending for this makeup. Even the quality, the way the makeup is performing, I think it's good, but it's not phenomenal where I can't wait to play with it or I think everyone should go out and try it. Just a lot of it is just, it's kind of left me scratching my head. I'll see you guys with an update. We just had some dinner and it's so nice that daylight savings, the light, it's so much lighter towards the end of the day. It's so much nicer to do these makeup updates, right? Because so I can actually do a makeup update and it's not like 3.30 p.m. and it's already dark outside. But I just want to show you guys what the makeup is looking like. As you can see, most of the lipstick is pretty much gone. I think in natural light, the eyebrows don't look bad. The color is still completely off to me. Eyeshadow is still there. Eyeliner looks horrendous, but it looked horrendous when I was applying it. So I'm not even gonna talk about that. I still see the blush. I still see the highlight. <clears throat> still see the bronzer. I will say this makeup, this foundation, it's, it has that texture of like a mousse cushion foundation where it just kind of, uh, like you can feel it on your skin. It feels very kind of heavy. And when I move, like if, it just does not move with your skin it kind of just wants to tighten and then i don't know it just doesn't feel good so not so very happy with the way it's feeling last and final update how am i looking you can see it looks pretty oily right here and it kind of feels oily as well like i said with that first update you can kind of just feel the makeup sitting on your face and it feels heavier as the natural oils come to the surface. I think because the formula is so thick, it just kind of sits on the skin and doesn't really become one with the skin, even though it looked really pretty with upon first application. I will say I do see a difference with the primer side versus no primer. I think the no primer side, everything just looks a little bit more exaggerated versus this, you can even see the texture. Like this side right here, it's a little bit more smooth. It's a little bit more soft and diffused. And on this side, just, there's just a little bit more pores that are visible, which is totally fine. But the primer is actually making a difference. So that's a really awesome thing. Moving on to mascara. I'm noticing some transfer on both sides. So on the lower lash line, mm, it's not wearing as well as I anticipated. Eyeshadow on both sides, it's kind of creasing a tad. You can even see it's going even into the, the crease on both sides. So it's not a super long lasting eyeshadow, which is disappointing. Overall as a brand from the products that I tried down to the, from the packaging, down to the application, down to the wear, a lot of the products, they're subpar. 
And then some products are actually really great, like the primer. I'm actually really excited to keep playing with the primer. I'm really, really intrigued. I do like the blush, but I will say when I applied the blush a little bit after the lipstick, I did it off camera. I like it better with the brush. I think you have a lot more control with the brush instead of with your fingers. I like the lipstick, but then I think the packaging is a little bit too much. I just think overall this brand, what made it so popular is the packaging and then just the detail of the product, the formula itself. It's so pretty, but in person, the packaging really disappointed me. Some of the packaging looked at the very top was actually really pretty and ornate, but then the rest of it felt very cheap, very hollow. A lot of it felt like kid makeup. I think that's what kind of was disappointing to me. Overall, I think there are some products definitely to check out, but yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> you wanna say bye? Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> but for now, thank you for watching, spending time with me. I'll see you later. Bye.